Along the upper Amazon, men don't count for much. Creatures like this run things in the jungles of Brazil. The snakes don't have it all to themselves, though. Alligators keep them from getting lonesome. They've given me some bad times the past few months. Now, in this stretch of the river, a remote tributary of the Amazon, I seem to have swum out of trouble. But all I had to worry about was remembering to rewind my movie camera every hundred feet. I was on a survey for the Brazilian government, checking underwater erosion along the banks of this tributary and collecting samples of bottom debris. My reports would determine if the river could feed a power plant. If so, this vast area, uninhabited now except for a handful of tribesmen, could be opened for settlement. Today was wrap-up day for me. There was just this one last section of the river to photograph. Suddenly, the bottom seemed to drop out from under me, down, deep down into a ravine. I saw bubbles in the water, and I saw where they were coming from. The jungle might be uninhabited, but this river wasn't. He was a working diver. He was using an underwater mining dredge, a kind of a giant vacuum cleaner that sucks up the riverbed and pans out whatever gold or precious stones that it may contain. The dredge was powered by a compressor on shore, which also fed air to him from a storage tank up there. It's what they call a hookah setup. It operates on the same principle as a Turkish water pipe. I started down along his airline for a closer look. That was just the time, though, that this river bottom miner decided to call it a day. He dropped his equipment and started up fast. Without even looking above to see if he had a clear road to the top, he didn't. In no time at all, the two of us were tangled in his lines. There was nothing to panic about, but this character did, probably because he was so surprised. He pulled at my air hose, yanked out my mouthpiece. I had my hands full keeping him from drowning us both. I was a total stranger to him, so I had to be an enemy. I managed to get clear of him finally, and he took off for the top. Oh, uh, that was it, I thought. And I headed back down for my camera. I didn't know that before the day ended, I'd be fighting for my life over a woman and a buried treasure. Who was the diver who had nearly drowned me? And what was he mining out here in the middle of Brazil? From his gear, I guessed that he was an American. An ugly one. What's the big idea shoving me around down there? Hey, take it easy, fella. You're the one that's been doing the shoving. Tom? Huh? Tom, what's the matter? Well, this joker was snooping around the claim. <sighs> claim? I didn't even know you had a claim. No? What were you doing down there, fouling up my lines, trying to drown me? You started up without looking, remember? You were down there looking, remember? That's right for the government. I'm doing a survey for them. I got the papers to prove it if you want to take a look at them. Big deal. We'll make your survey someplace else. We don't want company around here. Tom, for goodness sakes. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know what he's talking about. Well, I'm sure you don't. I'm Mrs. Marzak, Jill Marzak. Huh? Nice to know you. Mike Nelson's my name. Hi. This is my husband, Tom.
queer from Arizona. Yeah. My, uh, my camp's just around the bend. You gonna hang around here long? Till tomorrow morning. And it's back to the States for me. Good. Well, we got work to do. Remember what I said, stay away from the claim. Lava run into some trouble. I'm sorry again, Mr. Nelson. I guess we've been working this river too long. We've been here nearly a year now. Of course, it wasn't until a couple of months ago that it meant anything. He found a really rich load of emeralds, and well, he's been driving himself ragged ever since. He's afraid someone's going to move in on him. I begged him to rest, but he won't do it. Been diving every day? Yeah. How long at a time? Sometimes eight hours a day. And alone, too, boy. That's bad. Well, he says we've got to make it while we can. Well, it's no good to make it if you're not around to enjoy it. That's what I tell him. Say, why don't you stay and have some food with us? Well, I'd like to, but uh, I gotta get back. Gotta finish my reports. Do you have to? I don't like to get behind. You, uh, see that he stays topside, huh? I'll try. Those emeralds can wait. Seems to me you're being awfully friendly with that guy. But it seemed to me you were being awfully rude. Don't worry, honey. You put out enough charm for both of us. Well, I have to admit, it was a pleasure to talk to someone for a change. What's wrong with talking to me? You're never here. You're always down there. Tom, look, you've just got to stop diving so much. Even Mike agreed with me. Mike agreed with you? So that's it. Well, let me tell you something. I don't believe all that con about him making a survey. And you keep away from him, you hear? We've got work to do. Get the compressor going. Don't you think you've done enough work for one day? At least let me fix you some food. Do you mind starting the compressor? An hour later, I returned to my own camp. I couldn't believe my ears. Was that a rifle shot? No doubt about it. And the shots were coming from downriver, from the direction of the Marzak camp. Fire those shots? Yes, Tom's in trouble. He's not getting any air. Did you check the compressor? Yes, it's not that. I don't know what it is. The airline must be pinched. Don't have any tanks. Let's hope he's not too deep. Tom Marzek was trapped at the bottom of the ravine. I couldn't see too clearly, but it looked as if he'd caught his airline under a rock. I started down to him. It was a long, long way down. Tom couldn't move the rock. The way he was pinned, he couldn't get the leverage, but I could. This removed the pressure on his air hose just in time, and then he was able to work his way out. We didn't waste any time after that, starting upstairs. Let me get this off. I suppose I gotta thank you for unhooking me down there. No, I'm okay. I gotta go back to work. No. You've been overdoing it. That's why you got into trouble. Your judgment's all shot. You've got to cut down on your diving time. I've been okay up till now. 
time you spend in the water is cumulative. You know that, don't you? Yeah. Tom, um, what if Mike hadn't come? What could I have done here by myself? I thanked him, didn't I? Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I'll be okay. Get some food into him and put him to bed. Okay. Thank you, Mike. I'll drop by in the morning and say goodbye before I leave. Don't you worry, huh? What are you trying to do? Kill yourself? You know, sometimes I don't think you care about me at all. I think all you care about is money. Is that what your Mr. Nelson told you? Well, at least he knows what he's doing. Tom, you're not that young anymore. You've got to start taking it easier. Lay off me, honey. Lay off me. Well, maybe what you need is a partner. Why don't you talk to Mike in the morning and see if he wants to come in with us? So that's it. You want a partner. Someone to stay topside and talk to you. Let me tell you something. I don't want any partner. And I'm not too sure I want the one I got. That afternoon, with my job done, I started packing my gear. The last thing that I expected now was company. Mr. Nelson? Mike? I've got to talk to you. Your husband know where you are? No, he's asleep. And when he wakes up, he's gonna go down again. Look, it's like a disease with him. All he thinks about are these emeralds. Yeah, I know he's got it bad. Couldn't slow him down, huh? He won't listen to me. Mike, would you talk to him, please? I'd just make matters worse if I talk to him. Please. Look, look, I love my husband very much, and I want him back the way he was. Please help me. Okay, I guess we can give it a try. Oh, thank you. That's all right. So I guessed right. Tom! Step aside. I said, get away from him. Tom! Tom, stop it! from me. And you too. Leave me be. Just doing all right until you showed up. Yeah. Just before I showed up, you almost killed yourself. You're going to succeed, too, if you keep on in this way. Yeah. If you don't care about yourself, think about your wife. What's going to happen to her? 
looked to me like she was doing just fine. She was worried about you. She thought maybe I might be able to talk some sense into your head. That's why she came here. Ah, uh, sure. I'll give the rest of this to you when I pull out in the morning. Take your, your wife back to camp. Let me finish packing, huh? The go-around with Marzek took a lot out of me. It was late the next day before I got all my gear together. Going with me? What do you mean? He sent me away. He thinks that you and I... Oh, brother. Well, I told him. I said if you wanted me or his claim, you'd have let him drown yesterday. I wish you had. Ah, uh, you don't mean that. Yes, I do mean it. If you don't let me go with you, I'm going to take his boat. Running away is not going to solve your problem. Yeah, come on, get in the boat. What are you going to do? I'm going to straighten that husband of yours out once and for all. Get in the stern, huh? Get up. By the time we got to the Marzak camp, I was steaming. From the minute he bumped into me, he meant nothing but trouble. Now I was ready to give it to him. But he was nowhere in sight. There he is. Dining alone again. Well, here I go once more. Well, you don't have to do it on my account. Once again, I started down that hookah line toward the bottom of the ravine. What trouble was this Marzek character in now? Now this time, he really was in a jam. Near as I could make out, he'd been excavating in a deep pothole. The river had collapsed the sides and buried him up to the waist. I tried to lift him out. No good, on account of the fins and his feet. The silt and gravel pressing down on them held his legs like cement. And I didn't dare put my own feet down into the hole. The shifting gravel might trap me, too. I had to do something, and it had to be soon. This might be the answer, the mining dredge, the giant vacuum cleaner. was choked with sand and gravel. I let it clear itself. Now I set to work with it. It did a wonderful job, sucking up more sand in a minute than I'd have been able to move by hand in an hour. I thought I'd have Tom free in no time. Suddenly, the dredge stopped working. Just like that, the power cut off. That meant that the compressor upstairs had quit. It also meant that no air would come down along the hookah line for Tom to breathe, except what was in the storage tank right now. And that was about five minutes worth. That's all the time that I had to get topside and fix the compressor.
As I came out of the water, I could feel the silence. The compressor was completely dead. Where was Jill Marzak? Had she been angry enough at Tom to plan something like this? Couldn't get the gas engine that powered the compressor to start. No wonder, no gas. And I couldn't use the fuel in our boats because outboards run on a mixture of gas and oil, which would foul up this kind of engine in a hurry. Then I realized, to avoid the danger of fire and explosion, Tom probably had stored his fuel supply a good distance away. Before Tom's air ran out entirely, I had to get him free. And it would have to be without mechanical help. I hated to think so, but I was sure now that Jill had done this deliberately. Going down after Tom this last time, I didn't have much hope. One glance and I could see that he felt just about the same way. He hadn't been able to budge one inch while I was gone. And nature took a hand now to make matters worse. With another slide that brought down a great load of silt and gravel around my feet too. Tom's air ran out, I gave him some of mine. After a few breaths, he wanted me to go topside again and try somehow to get the dredge going. I tried to explain that it wasn't any use. Without gas to run the compressor engine, the dredge was dead. Then, without warning, a cloud of bubbles burst from Tom's regulator. Air was coming down to him from topside. The compressor engine was working again. In an instant, I had the dredge going at full blast, tearing out the sand and giving Tom back his life. On the way up, I wondered if Tom was thinking what I was thinking, or hadn't he guessed that his own wife had tried to kill him. See what happens? You're not safe without me. What? You forgot to fill the gas tank. That's why the engine stopped. So that's where you were, huh? You went for more gas. Nearly died. Hey, you know, all the time I was down there, I thought you were trying to get rid of me. How can you say a thing like that? I love you. If anything happened to you, I, I wouldn't want to go on living. I mean it. Oh, baby, I must be sick to think thoughts like that. Well, you've got to start taking it easy. I'm ready to chuck the whole thing if you want me to. No, that isn't what I want you to do. But. You want me to take a partner? It's okay, I'll, I'll take Mike. No. I don't mind. I don't want you to do that either. I want you to go on working. Only spend more time with me and less with your emeralds. Think you can take it? You know I can take it. Well, you two don't need me anymore. I see you in Arizona. I'll be back next week at the same time with another sea hunt story. Plan to be with us again, huh?